FNAF is full of what most would consider cursed content. The lore, for example, or the timeline is pretty cursed. But what items in the FNAF universe themselves are cursed? And you should avoid touching with a 10 foot pole, since you know, they're, they're like the Grinch. And this is Christmas, because this is coming out on Christmas Day. Merry Christmas, by the way. I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway, cursed FNAF items are what we're exploring today. Let's do it. In a 10, Music Man. Music Man certainly isn't cursed in the typical sense, but his appearance is certainly curse-like and makes me feel like I want to just crawl into a hole and cry forever. He, he's just freaking horrifying, man. I don't get it. This is probably the most cursed appearance in any of the FNAF games of any animatronic ever. Well, aside from the Music Man Spider, as I will continue to refer to him as from Security Breach, which honestly just ends up making him even more cursed. This guy is one of the most haunting animatronics to ever poison our screens, and is certainly going to cause some more horrific moments going forward. Thanks, Music Man, for just being the weird, creepy uncle who's always somehow behind you waiting to strike. Not in that way, you freaking sickos. In a nine sea bonnies. Mott and his little brother Rory go to Freddy Fazbear's Pizza for a birthday party Rory was invited to. Mott finds his crush Teresa at the party and the two have a conversation until Mott teases Rory by saying that he looks like a sea monkey. Rory then decides to get revenge on him by using his tickets to buy sea bonnies, animals sold by Fazbear Entertainment that are basically sea monkeys but rebranded. Mott then eventually goes to get a CAT scan and they find tumor like clumps of sea bonnies all around the inside of his body. Later that night Mott sees that his skin is turning a translucent pale blue. He quickly jumps out of his bedroom window and runs to the hospital in the pouring rain. Why he didn't contact his parents, I don't know, as his skin becomes more and more translucent. He accidentally ends up tearing a chunk of his flesh out by scratching it too much, but then he sees in the light that it's actually just a mass of sea bonnies, and then he throws them to the ground. I think that it goes without saying that you shouldn't touch sea bonnies or even normal sea monkeys after this story. And, and like, you really also, you shouldn't eat them, even if they are just, like, basically micro shrimp. And it ate Springlock animatronics. Every time someone has touched a Springlock animatronic in this game series, I swear they die. It's like the most cursed animatronic classification in the world. Springlock animatronics, if you don't know, are a kind of animatronic that functions as both animatronic and suit. The two we know of are Spring Bonnie and Fredbear, both of which are present at Fredbear's family diner. These suits have a system that moves all the robotic parts away from the interior, pushing them to the side to allow enough space for a human to get into the suit, thus changing it into suit mode. But those spring lock mechanisms seem to love to fail in the presence of water, which is how William got spring trapped in FNAF 3. Crying Child also died thanks to a spring lock animatronic, but that was not due to a spring lock failure. I've said it once, and I will keep saying it, I'll say it a million more times if I have to. There were no spring locks that were able to fail. Plus, there would have been no spring locks in an open mouth, because there would be nothing in the mouth if there was enough room to put in a child's head. Since the animatronic was in animatronic mode as well, the robotic parts weren't pushed to the side by the spring lock mechanism, resulting in there being no danger from the spring locks because they can't fail. Because they can only fail if they're open, but they were closed. The spring locks weren't active, therefore they couldn't have failed. So he just got crushed by jaw power, which is a whole other can of worms that I talk about in many other videos. And seven, fan games. I don't know if you saw the list about fan games that will make you need to go to confession, but if you did, you will already understand why fan games are on the list of cursed FNAF items. Especially because of games like Five Nights at Anime and Five Nights at the Car, where Five Nights at Anime is exactly what you'd expect, well-endowed anime-style animatronics that are completely animatronic with not a soul in sight, and Five Nights at the Car just being the most depressing thing ever uploaded onto Game Jolt ever. It's like, it's a collection of three JPEGs, that's it. They're not even PNGs or EXE files. The game is just three images made in MS Paint. And now, I need to move on before I start screaming again. You should go watch that video though. The fan games that will send you to confession. Do it. And it's six, FNAF World. FNAF World is pretty cursed in the same vein that Music Man is cursed. Except with FNAF World, we kind of just ignore it and pretend that it doesn't exist. Like Harry Potter in his room. FNAF World is the ET for the Atari of FNAF games. However, 
I, I still don't know how to play it. If you don't know, ages ago I played FNAF World on the channel and it was just like a cacophony of confusion and just all of the swears. And me being worried that the jump scare attack would actually result in a jump scare. I sped through the opening cutscene and still had to deal with the whole secret mission thing where we had to set the pieces in place for the FNAF 3 clues, which actually ends up meaning that this game is at least somewhat canon. I mean, no idea how, but technically, it is canon, in a way. So, that's cursed enough for me. Halfway through in number 5, FNAF AR. While the game of FNAF AR isn't cursed, the delivery service that FNAF AR revolves around is definitely cursed. I, I mean, at this point, <laughs> anything that has to do with these characters is surely cursed. However, particularly these freaking animatronics that they're shipping to kids are r the real thing that is cursed in this game. Why? Because, well, we learned through emails that you aren't even supposed to have, by the way, that they know these robots are on the fritz, pun intended, but they don't fix it before they end up sending them out to unsuspecting families. Plus, again, for the like 1,000th time, they're shipping out versions of their dead or presumed dead at the time serial killer and think that it's totally okay. They've even made new versions of that animatronic that would still serve as their serial killer so they know full damn well what they're doing. They even name one of these animatronics, one of the, the dead serial killer versions, The Curse. I think that speaks for itself. In for FNAF VR. I mean, okay, given that there's a manifestation of a psychotic serial killer in FNAF VR that will take over your mind if you aren't paying attention, I think it's safe to say that the entirety of FNAF VR is cursed. Or I guess technically the Freddy Fazbear Virtual Experience is cursed, since that's the game that we're playtesting in the game. Unless it's some super meta sh** where like, even though we're playtesting a VR game through a VR game, like in the game world as well, like some like glitch trap can still sense that we're here from our world. I don't know. That's a whole other can of worms. And considering how both playtesters ended up meeting terrible fates, one cutting his face off, and the next probably becoming a psychopathic serial killer bunny, controlled by the bunny that tries to take over us as well, saying that FNAF VR is cursed, I think honestly goes without saying. Or even if we played, if we play as the as the character who would then go on to be Vanny, technically, then all three testers would have met a terrible fate, because I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure Tape Girl's dead. But saying that FNAF VR is cursed, I think honestly just, it, it goes without saying, so I don't really need to say it. I, I just needed to list this as a number with no, I like, I could have just list, left this with no description and you know exactly why you shouldn't touch it. Yet, here we are anyway, with me padding out the runtime of this video so the YouTube algorithm doesn't bury us. And, uh... Okay, I think we're good now. Getting close to the end in number three, Fetch. Fetch is a grayish brown animatronic dog the size of a beagle sporting a pointy triangular head, yellow eyes, and a red collar with his name on it. He has exposed spots showing his endoskeleton with a tarnished metal look and some wires hanging out. He has a vintage circuit board in his chest cavity as well. At the end of his Fazbear Fright story though, Fetch kills Greg's love interest, Kimberly, without Greg's knowledge, Greg being the main character of the story, and brings her corpse into Greg's house. Disturbed to see Kimberly's corpse under the blanket after his shower, Greg checks his phone and gets one final message from Fetch that says, see you. I think that it's fairly evident why Fetch is, is a cursed thing that you should never touch because Greg touched it and look at what happened. It also doesn't help that my father's name is Greg, but he wouldn't touch Fetch unless he like found it at a thrift store and my mother wouldn't be happy with it, resulting in probably a similar ending to this. Although I don't think that this Greg and Gregory from Security Breach are the same person. I don't think my dad even knows what FNAF is. Even when I explain to him what my job is, I don't think he gets it. <laughs> and ultimately, in a number two, Ella. Ella is an animatronic doll and was one of the three toys that was built by Henry for his daughter Charlotte Emily. Ella was built to match Charlie's size as a small child, and when the wheel at the foot of Charlie's bed is turned, Ella exits her mini closet holding up a cup for a tea party. 
Since Ella spent years of neglect inside her closet, she is the most intact of all other things on this list, with her fancy dress almost as crisp as the day Charlie left Hurricane. However, she is also the main antagonist of 1.35am, the first story in the Fazbear Frights book of the same name. Ella is the doll that Delilah buys at a yard sale, where she is revealed to also be an alarm clock. She mistakenly sets an alarm for 1.35am instead of p.m. and then throws her away, thinking that she's not working. After this, for the next few weeks, Ella ends up waking up at exactly 1.35am, either by producing noise or just manifesting in front of Deliah. She is also able to mimic voices of the people that Deliah knows, and is seemingly able to teleport and disappear instantaneously. Deliah is reasonably terrified, sleeping after this, knowing that Ella's just gonna wake her up at 1.35am anyway, so she ends up dying in, in the vents of some location. You get why it's on the list, okay? And finally, in at number one, the tapes. The most cursed item in FNAF history, aside from FNAF VR itself, has to be the tapes present inside of FNAF VR. I mean, those tapes are the reason this thing is cursed. And personally, I haven't really tried to collect them all, and to be fair, th that seems to be the wisest decision. Since when looking at it in the grand scheme of things, the thing that makes both this game and these tapes cursed is when all 16 tapes are together. That's what makes Glitch Trap or Mal Hair or William or whatever you want to call it stronger and able to manifest and attack you. So by not collecting all the tapes and like me, just leaving them wherever you actually end up, you're saving yourself. So look at me go. I'm winning FNAF by being a cowardly little bitch. And if that's not winning life, I don't know what is. That's all the time we have for today, friends. Thank you all so much for watching. I have been in Shower Make on Monroe, and I'll see you in another video. Now I'm gonna go back to not collecting tapes and being the best in FNAF.